Mailbag time. Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Let's start with the first one. <laughs> Huge package, not a lot of content. It is 10 pieces of TPS 3839G. 33. 33 is probably something with 3.3 volts. Maybe this is a power regulator. Let's check. These TPS 383X are ultra low power supply voltage monitors. And how are they used or what is the purpose of a supply voltage monitor? We connect them to the power of the microprocessor and to the reset pin of the microprocessor. And if the voltage here, for example, is less than uh, around uh, 3 volt, for example, then the microprocessor is reset. Now these chips can be used for microprocessors themselves to reduce the probability of brownouts and get stability during shutdown and um, and startup but we could also use this for example in a power bank to detect a signal when the battery is low and to probably give the Raspberry Pi a shutdown voltage. It is very probable that this will appear in a device which makes our Raspberry Pi a little bit more stable. 10 pieces are seven dollars. Next one Nice buttons with a built-in LED. You get them in different voltages from 3 volt, 5 volt, 6 volt up to 220 volt and you get them in several colors. Also locking or momentary. I bought a few of them. These are 5 volt including this one here. And if you connect the LED to 5 volt, you see what happens. And here the yellow one, so they are quite nice. And uh, also the quality of the switch is, is quite good. This is a nice addition to my collection of different buttons, because buttons usually are important for devices. Uh, I like these combined buttons because they are simple to mount. You have with one hole and everybody knows by now that I like round holes more than square holes and with one round hole you have a, an LED plus a button. Very good. They are around one dollar. The moment, momentary, they are a little bit cheaper the latching are a little bit more expensive. The color does not matter. Also, the voltage does not matter to the price. Next one. This is a 24 gigahertz radar chip. And it should be stronger than the ones I already have. And, uh, but I'm not sure what it will be, what it will detect. I have to try it out once, but not in, but not during the mailbag. This will take quite some time to check this one out. Next one. So these are two things, Dishka our cat will not like. They are two readers for animal tags and this is an animal tag that I can test the devices without bothering the cat. This is probably more for cows or so, for the ears of cows or something. And this is an expensive one and this is a cheap one and uh, obviously this has a bigger loop 
than this one, but they work, both work on 134 kilohertz. So far I was not able to, to read these RFIDs. So we will check and I will show you if I can read the chips of my cat, because then I could automate something around her. These are chips which can be implanted and I will also use these for my tests. Next one. Large chips, 29301. This is a low dropout regulator, 3 ampere. It has a dropout voltage of only 450 milliwatt a full load, so I expect it is smaller um, when you do not have full load, and it, and it works up to 20 volt. This would be a candidate for our QC3 power source. 10 pieces cost $2.67, so one piece is 26 cents, which is really not a lot. Next one. This is an interesting module. It is a module which can deal with this new standard PD for chargers. I was asked by viewers if I can also do not only quick charge, but also this um, PD standard. So I ordered now a chip because the PD standard is much, much more complicated or more complex than this, the quick charge. At least this is what I know so far. But of course, we need also a charger for that. Next one. It is a Dodo Cool, cool your life. I'm not sure if I want to cool my life, I want to spice my life, I want to do something, but cool my life is an interesting slogan. So this Dodo Cool is a charger and it is a PD charger and it has a USB-C adapter. So this is what I was looking for, together with this PD print, it should be possible to experiment. We even get an instruction manual. One thing could be interesting, it should go up to 20 volt and 2.25 amps, which is about 50 watt. And uh, this is different to all the quick charge uh, chargers and power banks I had, they usually went up to 12 volt and this PD stuff goes up to 20 volt and this is why I think this is better to be used in a mobile power supply. This one came with DHL, but this is not a normal mailbag. I know what's in because I ordered it. And as every YouTuber these days, I also got a package from LCSC. This is a fast growing Chinese company or pe better known under the name of JLC PCB. But this package does not only contain PCBs. Here are nice PCBs. So these are huge PCBs and they are drivers from the summer project. So one of the members of the summer project created the drivers for the tank. Here an ESP32 board and here an H-bridge with, with four MOSFETs. And the interesting thing on this uh, LCSC company is they not only do manufacture um, PCBs, they also are a distributor like DigiKey or so. And uh, I think their plan is really to become a competitor of DigiKey for parts. The interesting thing for us makers is that we get all we need for our project in one package at the same time and with only one shipping cost. If LCSC does a good job with avoiding fake chips, they will get more project orders from me, I think. Next one, 
This one does not come from China. This one comes from the United States. And it contains a letter. It is from one of my viewers. It is a Wi-Fi stepper project. And Andrew wrote me that he wants to do a Kickstarter and sent me one of those for review. It has an ESP32 on board, which is already good <laughs> for me. And of course we can connect a stepper motor here. And it is made by Good Robotics, which is a nice name. Maybe I just hook it up and look what it does. Now I connected the board to one of the NEMA stepper motors, a NEMA 17 stepper motor. It's a bipolar one with four wires, A and B, plus and minus, and I connected it to around 24 volts. You can connect this Wi-Fi stepper up to 85 volt, which is quite a lot, and with this barrel uh, connector here, up to 50 volts. Now, I do not know exactly all the details. You can have a look at it if you want in the link in the description. This ESP creates a web page where we can do some things. And this web page actually is very, very well made, I think. You see it here. It has a quick start guide, it has settings, documentation, and even troubleshooting. So the issue is the possible cause and the possible solution. Very well made, I think. But I just start the quick start. We see here, it measures the voltage. Status is idle. And we select speed control now. I can say speed 30 RPM, forward, reverse. And here you can uh, select all the different accelerations, deaccelerations, and so on and so on. And this uh, max speed here is uh, way too high. My NEMA motor only goes a little bit over 300. Now it's 400. If we go up, we see it stops. So I do not know exactly who will use this board. It's not cheap you can have a look at uh, the Kickstarter when it comes up. But uh, at least from the quality point of view here, uh, especially the software is really very, very nicely done. So good luck, Andrew. I hope this mailbag was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, then consider supporting the channel. You find the links in the description. Thank you. Bye.